this. Well, Javed, uh, tell us the circumstances behind this. And of course, uh, this kind of puts into question, once again, the uh, ruling that comes down from the judiciary and then for it to be withdrawn. Well, it is a bit shocking verdict when it comes to the law of the case, when it comes to the facts of the case, uh, something legally speaking no one was expecting. To begin with, uh, the verdict against General Pervez Musharraf was given by a special court by judges of the high courts. So another high court could not have turned down the similar verdict. This verdict could have been turned down only by the Supreme Court. But the trouble is, the prosecuting agency in this particular case has to be the federal government. And when this particular case was initiated, then it was the government of the Nawashi. Now we have the government of the Prime Minister Imran Khan, uh, who is uh, very much inclined to the military establishment. He, he doesn't want to go, go beyond, uh, doesn't want to go out of the favor of the military. And that is why we have seen that there was a weak prosecution in the Lahore High Court. But nonetheless, the verdict was, legally speaking, was shocking. Uh, also because of the fact that it is an open secret that General Pervez Musharraf had declared martial law against the judiciary back in 2007. He changed the name that it is an emergency. Emergency is a constitutional tool which an army chief could not have used. So he used a lot of nomenclature to basically legally and politically deceive the general public. And then the court today has come up that uh, the, uh, there was a constitutional amendment because that constitutional amendment could not have been applied with a retrospective of facts. Uh, under the Constitution of Pakistan, no constitutional provision can be challenged by any court of the law. So it seems that perhaps in one way or the other, high court seems to be undoing the constitutional provision and then it seems that the court has come up with what many legal experts say that perhaps not very tenable legal arguments saying that uh, this uh, this case was initiated the prosecution was initiated without the without the consent of the uh, federal cabinet uh, now this particular case this has been applied with the retrospective effects which means the prosecution was started back in 2013 this that court verdict had come on uh, on uh, in 2016 so there are huge legal uh, legal lacunas in this particular case but the real trouble is that in this case this case has to be legally educate, uh, agitated and appeal should be filed by the federal government but the federal government probably would be it will be difficult for the federal government to file an appeal with the supreme court given the fact that the federal government is under pressure from the military establishment, which has gone public, that they were quite upset with this death sentence. Though under the law of the Pakistan, any military general, if he imposes martial law, overthrow a constitution or a federal government or a, the constitutional judiciary, that is a high treason. So it is a not, a, it, is, it seems to be a bit difficult for the military to put up with the fact that uh, overthrowing a constitution is a high treason. They think that it is not high treason. Only if a military general collide with the enemy, that is high treason. But the law of Pakistan, the constitution of Pakistan, treat it as as a treats it as a high as a high treason crime, which unfortunately seems to be ignored by Pakistan's High Court today.